So first and foremost, I would like to, to thank Professor Frugel for his kind invitation, because I'm clearly a non-scholar, a designated non-scholar in, uh, in theology. So my point is to use, make use of uh, formal systems, formal tools, in order to make sense, if any, of uh, the Saptabangi especially, because this is very intriguing. This is a very intriguing system for logicians and Western philosophers, so to say. So my uh, approach is a constructivist one. Constructivist is a, the term I just borrowed from uh, Professor Barcelovic in one of his quotations, according to which when you are a, a constructivist, you are opposed to the reductionist approach of uh, uh, Indian systems, for instance. So constructivist is a way to use, to make use of modern tools in order to disambiguate uh, some uh, ancient texts and words and concepts from Indian philosophy especially. So that's exactly what I want to, to do uh, right now, if, if possible. And uh, the reason, the personal reason why I was very interested by uh, Indian logic, especially with Sabangi, by Jain logic, is because uh, it's uh, often referred to multiple values with the Saptabangi, because seven true values, so to say, and because they uh, often refer to power consistency. It's a non-classical system, and uh, two of these words are very uh, frequently uh, referred, mentioned in, uh, with respect to Jain logic. But at the same time, it's very dangerous to use uh, modern systems, because uh, if you want to uh, understand uh, ancient, ancient texts, or to see ancient texts with modern glasses, of course, the threat of uh, anachronism is very big. And uh, I want to be, to just to propose you as a non-scholar, uh, a way to reconstruct or to uh, create a puzzle with different concepts and expressions for Jain logic and to have your opinion as scholars about this point. That's a, the gist, the game, so to say. Uh, I have been, I had the pleasure to be uh, mentioned by Professor Barcelovic in this quotation as one of the uh, authors who developed some logical systems but without uh, paying attention about the real meaning of the text. Of course, I totally agree because I'm not a scholar in Indian philosophy. So uh, I was, uh, I was uh, the target, so to say, with a gunnery of, uh, of this approach. And I would like to say to you this 20 minutes in order to defend my case, so to say, to defend my point, if, if possible. It's not a trial, but it's just a way to say that logic has something to say. Modern logic has something to say uh, with, uh, uh, about Indian logics. So, uh, if I want to uh, reproduce different uh, ways I uh, reconstruct uh, logical system from Jain logic, the first paper uh, I followed Ganeri. Ganeri in which we have something like a many valued system for Saptabangi. We have seven true values, seven logical values, and I propose an existential quasi true functional view of Saptabangi. I will explain exactly the sort of uh, parents uh, in a couple of minutes. I propose to develop this uh, logical system with a syncretist, a 15 valued version, 15 valued uh, logical values, because there are two different ways of uh, interpreting Avaktavya. Avaktavya is supposed to be uh, either asset, uh, both asserted and denied, or neither asserted nor denied. So there's two different interpretations of Avaktavya, and if you decide to conflate both interpretations, you obtain 15 logical values, two values, so to say, that's it. The point is that, of course, it's a purely formal extension. It's just a game, a formal game uh, with uh, ancient texts. So right now, I would like to say, to use uh, um, these systems to uh, answer to the question how to account for the giant rationale throughout the Saptabangi. Right now, that's, that's the point of my uh, presentation. So uh, Professor Shin just uh, presented the, uh, the seven bangis. So I, feel, I suppose that you are very familiar with uh, these uh, bangis. We have seven. The fifth one is just a combination of the fourth and the, and the first. The, uh, the sixth one is a combination of uh, the uh, fourth and the second. And the seven ones is just uh, uh, an addition of the three different uh, mula bangis. Mula bangis is uh, uh, asti, nasti, and avaktavya. It's just something like a um, combination, combinatory uh, game with uh, this sort of uh, uh, free Mulan bangies as primary bangies. So, if formal logic is supposed to disambiguate uh, ancient expressions, that means that I should be able to give a new, not a new, uh, a clear, precise understanding of uh, a lot of different concepts, including these ones. I just let you read this. Uh, uh, very uh, famous notions, Anikantavada, Avaktavya, Bangi, 
status quo teaching. Status quo teaching is different. For, it comes from the Madhyavaka uh, tradition, from the Buddhist tradition. But I would like to make a very clear comparison between Avaktavya and uh, Avaktavya, between Saptabhangi and Chatuskoti in the end of my paper, because they have something very intriguing as a parallelism between both uh, Indian schools. Ayavada, Paramata Satya, sort of truth, Paribasa, uh, two sort of negation, rational negation and a non-affirming negation, Pramanya, Saptabhangi, Santayavada, Shat, Shatvada, and so on. Okay. So the first point is that I would like to emphasize uh, the one value system I would like to present here. Because in uh, 29, I proposed a seven valued, but here I'm mo modest, I propose a one valued system. For logicians, it's very strange to have one value. I'll just explain why it's very strange to have only one true value, logical value. So uh, in this new paper, in two different papers, I propose this uh, one, one value then with, by means of an existential interpretation of Saptabhangi, Sapta because uh, the siat means that there is one standpoint, sajat, and so on. So there is a standpoint, means an existential interpretation of siat. That's all. Um, this interpretation, this formal interpretation of the Saptabhangi is supposed to uh, superset, to replace the fragrant true values by new sort of logical values, because the logical values I use here are not the fragrant true values, it's something else. non fragrant logical values. And I would like to emphasize that uh, by means of this game, logical game, the import of dialogue uh, is supposed to be rendered by means of a question-answer game. Because this semantics I propose here is uh, obtained by means of a question-answer game. Because uh, the dialogue is very important, I think, so in uh, Indian um, fairies, doctrines. So the name of this formal semantics is a question-answer semantics to account for giant logic. So we have uh, by means of this uh, question answer semantics, I propose a discussion about the very meaning of a true values. What's the meaning of a true value? Uh, if you are a reader of Frege, Frege, Goldtop Frege's philosophy, for instance, the meaning of a true, true value is very precise. But I'm absolutely not sure that this true value is rendered by a uh, Saptabhangi, for instance. So we have to be very cautious uh, when we want to parallel ancient and modern uh, concepts. This non fragrant semantics is used to be so because, first, the sense of a sentence is another set of questions. You ask questions about the sentence, and uh, if you uh, give answers, yes, no answers to the questions you just asked, you obtain the reference. So the reference of uh, a sentence, in this case, is just a set, ordered set of uh, answers to questions. Yes, no, yes, etc. So the reference of sentences is a logical value, admittedly, but not a true value. It's not a fragrant true value. The logical value of, uh, of Bangi is a set of answers about semantic predicates. Semantic predicates in the sense that uh, the Bangi are supposed to be statements in which semantic predicates are assigned to sentences. That's the way I uh, reconstruct the very meaning of each Bangi. And especially I wanted to emphasize about this point, by means of question answer game, I uh, do justice to the bivalence. Uh, feature of Saptabhangi because uh, a plenty of texts say that uh, the Indian scholars, philosophers only refer to two true values truth and falsity so how could you have seven true values if, you if only two values are mentioned in the text so it's not, it's not, it doesn't make sense so by means of this uh, new formal semantics you catch the bivalent uh, uh, structure of sentences so in this case, every statement, a statement about a sentence, is about the truth or falsity. So you say yes or no for uh, an answer. So if you have yes, we have the value one. If you say no, you have the value zero. So by means of this, uh, this game, I propose to reconstruct the bangies, the, the seven bangies. So we have third order questions. The first question is about uh, alpha. Alpha is a sentence uh, about the pot, for instance. You say, is uh, alpha assertable? So can you say something justifiably true? The second question is, can you say something about alpha justifiably false? And this, uh, the third, the third uh, question, the third bangi, is about uh, avaktavya. It's uh, non-assertable. So is it the case that alpha is non-assertable? I have to disentangle the very meaning of non-assertable because it's not clear. I think that it's not very proper to use non-assertable as a way to translate avaktavya. It's supposed to be sliding. And here are just the seven different bangis. If you say yes for only the first question and no to the two other ones, you have the first bangi. The second, the third, the fourth bangi, and you have 
the same answer. Why not eight? Because if you have the eight bangi, you say no to each of the, uh, the questions. And the bangis are always a yes answer to uh, each of a specific monobangi. You never have only no answers to each of the, uh, the three bangi. That's the reason why you have seven and not eight bangi. The second question that is, uh, uh, is uh, alpha deniable? Um, I take this uh, uh, answer to be something to do with uh, negative assertion. Do you think that this sentence is false? Do you commit in the falsity of the sentence? And that's a very specific for uh, this is a very specific uh, meaning of negation to be distinguished by another meaning of negation that we present in the third part. So here we have just a uh, way to. Uh, to have a logical symbolism for, uh, to do justice to this difference. For instance, if you say that, uh, if you have a, a yes answer to the first question about the negation of alpha, you have exactly the same as uh, the uh, yes answer for the second question. So you can translate these sort of questions by means of the meaning between yes and no uh, answers. And here we say that the negation proceeds like an answer switcher. Is we have two different answers for two questions about Justify be true or justify be false. And you just have to switch the two answers in order to make sense of the negation of the sentence. This is sentential negation. The sentential negation. I have to uh, emphasize over this point. So it does make sense. It's very clear. It's, uh, you have modern systems, you have modern glasses, and you can read so the subtopology with modern glasses. So far, so good. So, why did you did I decide to reduce from seven to one logical value? Because I have seven first, in the middle I have only four, and then only one. Uh, no zero, of course, I just uh, decided to stop to, to one logical value. So a mulabangi is just a statement about the semantic predicate of a given sentence. Uh, truth about the truth of the sentence, about the falsity of the sentence, or about the avaktavia state of the sentence. So, for instance, if you want to translate shat asti, this means the same as the sentence alpha is true from some standpoint. The meaning of the second mulabangi is the same as the sentence uh, uh, non-alpha uh, is true from another standpoint. So you say that it's possible to say that from another standpoint, you have the false T of the one is the same sentence. So it's clear that from, from this uh, question answer game, uh, one and two are totally independent. You can have two uh, no answers, two yes answers. So there's no uh, implication between both answers, like as the case is in classical logic, for instance. So that's uh, just to explain here uh, by this means. And to the contrary, according to me, non one sandiness and the vada means something like you have two yes answers to the first, to the second, uh, to the first two uh, mulabangis. Uh, is the sentence true? Yes. Is the sentence false? Yes. But from two different standpoints. So you have two yes answers. That's the gist, according to me, of the point with uh, non one sandedness and uh, Kantavada. So uh, as you can see here, you have two kinds of statements, uh, attitude towards the sentence. You have either assertion or denial. Once again, denial, in joint philosophy, denial is supposed to be the same as negative assertion. You say yes about the negation of a sentence, or you commit in the uh, true value of the sentence. It's the case that it's not. Uh, it's the case that the pot is not such and such. That's a way of commitment. So, if you are, I want to make a parallelism between uh, uh, Mulabangi and uh, modern logic, I would like to say something like uh, a parallel between Mulabangi and Belknaps. Belknaps is a, a, a modern logician who proposed a four-valued logic uh, about told true or told false. It's something like a, a, a logic of uh, viewpoints, so to say. So, for instance, siat asti eva is the same as alpha is told true. Siat nasti eva is the same as alpha is told false, but from two different standpoints, different standpoints. So that has to do with uh, the uh, successive denial and session, not the simultaneous, in Niagara Tavim, the successive, the third bangi. So, a difference is to be made between two versions of inconsistency. What is exactly the meaning of being inconsistent? Because it's, that's a blame uh, currently made uh, to Satabangi. A difference is to be made between Avaktavya and the, two, uh, the twofold yes answer. If you say yes to the uh, two uh, first questions about the meaning, the true value of the sentence, it's not the same as Avaktavya. Because Avaktavya, for some scholars, from some uh, logicians, Avaktavya is supposed to be something like a strong 
inconsistency. You have falsity and uh, uh, truth from one and the same standpoint. So, for instance, this view has been defended by a priest, grand priest, uh, a paraconsistentist, for instance. Uh, I propose another view of uh, Avaktavya, according to which Avaktavya means something like a lake of value. It's not both true and false, it's a lake of value. It's a lake of value in the sense that uh, uh, the subject of uh, a sentence that is supposed to be Avaktavya is uh, a subject, extra mundane subject, like Hatman or Blahman. I have this interpretation. So, in this case, it's not a value. Avaktavya is not a value, or an absence of value, it's different. So we have three grades of inconsistency, because according to the sort of answers we give, you have, for instance, you have a light inconsistency. You just have falsity and truth from two different standpoints. So it's totally trivialized, so to say, the inconsistency. Another view of inconsistency is mild inconsistency. In this case, you say uh, yes and uh, no from two different, from this one is the same standpoint. You say that, uh, do we think that uh, this sentence is true from this standpoint? If you say yes, from this standpoint, and uh, yes for another one, but if you say yes and no for the one at the same standpoint, this is a stronger inconsistency. And strong inconsistency is the case in which we say both yes and no to one the same question. So we have three different steps, the grades of uh, inconsistency, so to say. So where is Avaktavya, where is Saptabangi in this case? That's my point, that's my problem. So Anekantavada, according to me, Anekantavada is just a light, a logic of light. Inconsistency. It just says that uh, you can have truth and falsity for one and the same st sentence for different standpoints, not one and the same, according to me. Those who claim that uh, it's truth and falsity from one and the same context um, are those who say that Avaktavya is the case. So I disagree with this point, but this is to be discussed. Okay, the third part is um, I would like to make a comparison between Saptabangi and Chatoskoti uh, for the end. It's a long hand. Not so long, but I just want to, to be clear about this. So the first question is why did I choose to use a one-valued logic uh, rather than a two-valued or maybe a seven-valued, uh, as is the beginning, for instance? The inconvenience of such a value, of course, it's, it nullifies the relation of consequence. Because if you want to construct uh, with modern logic a system of inference, an inferential system, you have to make a difference between at least two true values. You have to make a difference between truth and falsity. Because if everything is true, you cannot make invalid judgments. Everything is valid, so to say. So this logic is trivial in this case. But in order to define this one valid logic, I would say that I think that in France, in the sense of the chapter Sattabang in text, is not a formal logic. Uh, the very uh, specificity of Jain logic is that if you want to talk about in France, like uh, as Mary Hélène, for instance, said this morning, it's something very empirical, informal. So it's not formal. It's not a formal view of uh, in France in this case. So the role of epistemic faculties, for instance, like perception, deduction, the nayas, the way to, or the pramanas, the way to have a judgment about a sentence, uh, is different from the case of a formal logic. So it is not something to be formalized, according to me. The question answer semantics insists upon the speech acts, because assertion is a speech act, denial is a speech act. So it's a statement about a sentence. And uh, by means of the question answers, you do justice to the, uh, this uh, Illocutionary aspect of uh, the statement, so the, the bongi, so to say. Um, so it's a logic only in the sense of a set of rules for the formation of judgment. That is, uh, Sapta Bangi just state how can we construct a specific set of sentences. Ten so minutes. I think that it's very akin to, excuse me? Yes. Uh, it's very akin to uh, what Aristotle did in the categories, but not in the analytics. So uh, Aristotelian, for instance, syllogism is something, a formal syllogism. It's not something to be related with what we uh, saw this morning, for instance, in the logics. So the advantage of uh, uh, a one value logic is that QS so it makes sense of light paraconstancy. It explains why we have only two, two true values, but seven different bungies, for instance. And uh, at the same time, why the paraconsistent aspect of this logic is very light. It emphasizes upon the role of dialogue, because it has question and answers. It's a dialogical game. It overcomes the pitfall of Octavia, because Octavia is not the same as both yes and no for one of the same questions. It's something else. And at the same time, it brings out the dual connection between Saptabogi and Chatuscuti. I would like to just finish doing five minutes about this point. So, uh, Saptabogi and Chatuscuti are supposed to be, uh, has to do with uh, soteriology, uh, something to obtain the salvation of soul. And truth is not the 
the first problem, so to say, in this logic. You have to find a way to, uh, to save your soul uh, in this uh, uh, religious doctrines. And uh, Matila said in one quotation, the following quotation, that Buddhism and Jainism propose to save the soul by totally opposed means. Uh, with uh, Buddhism, you uh, deny everything about the truth and falsity of sentences, whereas with Jainism, you affirm, you accept both the truth and the falsity from different standpoints, but you deny with Buddhist logic why you accept with Jain logic. We have something like a duality between the uh, sort of answers you give. So, a logic has been uh, constructed for this uh, purpose with uh, two saturated domains of valuation. Saturated means that we have just one more value. We have a, a set of a logical of with four different values, but only one is given for the sentence from the Sat Tabangi and from the, uh, from the Chattuskoti, only one. So maybe you use, uh, you know this, because we have uh, the four Koti from Chattuskoti, and the point with the Buddhist the Chattuskoti from Nag uh, as Nagarjuna was to deny the four Kotis. So we say no to uh, each of the four statements. The statements are very akin to the Bangis uh, bypassing. But the difference is that when, if, if you use modern classical logic, you, it results in uh, inconsistency. You can deny A, B, C, D without uh, uh, having a, an inconsistent system. So we have to avoid this inconsistency by means of another true value, logical value, to say. Bernard proposed to say that, for instance, A, B, C, D correspond to four different true values. But the point is that when you deny each of the cotis as Nagarjuna did, uh, you don't say uh, it's true or it's false or it's both true, you don't say anything. So priest proposed, one priest proposed to extend the four-valued system from Benap to a five-valued. He said that, for instance, the most obvious way to account for Nagarjuna's stance is to proceed, is to take this possibility as a fifth semantic value. So we had a new value, E, to the existing four systems with uh, false, true, both true and false, or neither true and false. But once again, if you say that uh, Sapta Bangi, you don't have any reason to say that each of the Bangi corresponds to a true values, you can't say exactly the same for the Kotis. Why do you say that each of the Kotis corresponds to a specific true value? You don't say any, we don't have any reason to do this. So according to me, the best way to account for the uh, Nagarjuna stance is to say that he makes use of denial in not in the same sense as a Jain. Jain use denial as something like a negative assertion. In this case, you don't have the negative assertion. You have uh, Paryudasha Pratisheda. Paryudasha Pratisheda is negation for the realist, for the Nyaya, but this sort of negation is not the same as the, uh, the negation Nagarjuna uh, used. Nagarjuna used uh, Prasaya Pratisheda. Excuse me, sorry for the accent. It's something like an irrecutionary negation in which you don't want to commit in the truth or the falsity of the sentence. And the result of this uh, position, it's, uh, we have just the proper, the specific true value, logical value, uh, in order to account for the Chakut to Scotty, is a reverse uh, answer. You don't have one, one. We have just don't have a yes uh, answer to both questions. You have no answer for both questions. That's the point, according to me, that's the way uh, the Buddhists should answer to the sentence in the Chatu Scotty. So just a way to uh, summarize the whole. So we have a four sub logics. So here you have the uh, answer for the Jain, you have the answers for the uh, Buddhists or the, for the Madhyamakas, and here we have the doctrinalists, uh, Aristotelian uh, logicians or maybe the Nyayas. They say either yes or no, but not both, never. So you have things like abilities, as in Belknap's abilities, we have both false, only false, only true, and neither true nor false. Just have a correspondence between this answer and this true value. A sub is supposed to be reduced to one logical value. You say yes to uh, the truth and falsity. Satus Kote is supposed to be the opposite value. That's the meaning of duality. You say no to both questions, while the sub is the giants say yes to both questions. And uh, to the end, it seems that we have something like a, a different uh, classification of uh, logical systems. The Nyaya are realists, so they are accept bivalent and say that you don't, you don't have both no answers or both yes answers, it's not possible. The Jains say yes to the both, uh, both questions, and Buddhists say no to both questions. So just a way to summarize the different point of view by means of my modern classes I just used during this, this talk. So here you have relativism, Relative, uh, truth is relative to the standpoint. Skepticism, we are not able to access to the truth. And doctrinalism, for each sentence, 
it's either true or false. Tessonal uh, data, so to say, in, in, uh, in Latin. So, yes, just the reference I use in order to make this uh, formal reconstruction of logic. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>